Ladies and gentlemen, this article comes out in WISPIS September 23rd, 2019. Wisconsin is one of those states that already see trouble ahead of the future. They have a shrinking youth population and a large aging population, which is going to create job shortages in the future. This report is going to show since 2011, there have been sharp declines in the state of Wisconsin, not statewide, but in certain counties across that state. So the state is now trying to work with a decreasing youth population and a growing number of seniors, and those seniors are going to be retiring. They're part of the baby boomers and a low birth rate, a new report from the Wisconsin Policy Forum shows. So the lack of working age residents varies across the state. So like I said, it's not statewide, it's in certain counties in Wisconsin. So you have counties like Marshfield and Wisconsin Rapids, which is faring much worse than other places like Madison and Appleton. So the Wisconsin working age is 18 to 64, peaked in 2011. So from 2011 on, they have been consistently dropping a percentage every single year. Now, they said it's not a big deal right now, but it is going to become a problem in the future. At the same time, the state's youth population has decreased by over 45,000 since 2011 for a decrease of 3.4%. And this trend, they're saying, is likely to continue in the state. And the birth rate is at the lowest that it has been in a generation. So all of this is going on at the same time in Wisconsin. Furthermore, the state's fertility rate has also decreased over the past 10 years, citing numbers from the State Department of Workforce Development. The report shows total jobs are expected to increase by 210,178 workers between 2016 and 2026. And with many from the baby boomer generation retiring, more job openings are sure to be created. But the state's projects uh, projects virtually no growth in the working age population through 2024. So they said that these long-term projections can be inaccurate. So, you know, it's not etched in stone, but they are seeing that there may be a big problem ahead. Since 2011, the state senior population, 65 and older, has increased by 163,970. And since 2005, it's grown by 42%. That's pretty significant. You know, your aging population is exploding. Reports Arthur said this trend could impact the state's ability to fill existing jobs as well as efforts to attract new businesses to the state and convincing existing companies to expand. Of the state's 23 most populated counties, 17 have lost working age residents since 2011. The greatest decrease was seen in Wood County, which contains Wisconsin Rapids and Marshfield. The county lost 5.9% of its working age population over that period. The second largest drop by uh, percentage was Manitowoc County, which lost 4.6% of its working age population since 2011. By number, Milwaukee County has lost the most working age residents with 8,846. Uh, 8, Dane County gained 
15,000 working age adults for an increase of 4.7 since 2011. So, um, and Dane County has also seen a strong and steady growth in its under 18 population. So, I, you know, I would imagine it's like that in most places throughout the country. You know, you'll have bigger populations in some counties and smaller in others. I, I think that is probably everywhere in the country. Appleton's. Out of Gamey County has experienced a 2.9% growth in its working age population in St. Croix and Kennesaw have seen modest increases, but those counties are near the Twin Cities and Chicago metro areas, and many jobs held by residents are outside of Wisconsin. The WPF report shows Wisconsin isn't alone in its workforce woes, citing research from the National Economic Innovation Group. The report shows half of U.S. states and 80 percent of U.S. counties lost prime working age adults between the ages of 25 and 54 in the decade spanning 2007 to 2017. For the state to meet its existing and future workforce challenges, report authors suggest finding ways to increase labor force participation among various populations, including teens, seniors, and those with criminal records. Yeah, you know, with the shortage, they're going to have to change all of that discrimination that they do against people that have served time. They're not going to be able to afford to withhold jobs from them anymore. Because you remember, you got a low birth rate here. You're not going to be able to afford to do that in the future. You're going to have to let these people into the workforce, whether you like it or not. So that's very true. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, including people with criminal records could help, including expanding reentry services for recently incarcerated. Yeah. I mean, that, that only makes sense. You know, that discrimination has gone on in this country for a long time with people serving time, getting out of jail even if they've done that job behind bars, they can't get that kind of job out here when they're free. All of that's going to come to an end. You watch, y'all. The state is already making progress on that front, the report shows, with new efforts to incorporate job centers into correctional facilities. Other potential solutions include expanding immigration programs and bringing in more non-resident students to the UW system, report Arthur said. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to change their attitudes about a lot of things like shutting people out of certain positions. You're not going to be able to afford to do that. And remember y'all, I did a report, um, a video on a report that recently came out a few weeks ago that said the young that are entering the job force are high in people that are Hispanic and black. And for the first time, it's got the fewest amount of white people entering the workforce. And these are people that have finished college and they are entering the workforce today. So that shift it's already happening. It's already going on now, you know, but they're going to have to think of ways to remedy these baby boomers leaving and finding enough people to fill these positions and all the things they refused to do in the past, they're not going to be able to afford to refuse in the future, especially when it comes down to inmates getting out of prison. 
So it look like they're going to be gainfully employed in the future. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.